Right. Okay. So last week we uh, we didn't have a shield, but two weeks ago we got as far as the bracha of Yotzer Or, which is the first bracha after um, Baruch Hu, and the first of the two, what we'll call pre-Shema brachot. Uh, their official title is Birchot. Um, they are the brachot of Shema. So we have spoken about Yotzer Or, and if you just to remind you, um, that bracha was a very long bracha because it begins with Yotzer Or of Orech Oshech. And I showed you the Pasuk, which actually says Yotzer Or Uvore Ra in the, uh, in the Tanakh. And the, the Rabbanim changed it. Um, and it goes all the way through to Yotzer Hama Orot. And in the middle of it, we had the Kedusha, if you remember. Uh, we had the Kedusha. We had Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Um, we had Baruch Kvod. Hashem im komo and Hashem im loch leolam boed, um, and that was the uh, the question was why we're allowed to even say that without a minion. And we spoke about that, and we got as far as the end of Yotzer um, Hamet Orot. So today we need to speak about the next bracha uh, of the uh, Shema, the pre Shema bracha, and that is. Um, the one which in your Siddur, Johnny, will be given yeah. Ahavat Olam. Yeah. And in your Siddur, Warren, will Ahavah. begin Ahavat Rabbah. Okay. okay. Now, there is a slight difference there between the um, version of the Nusach Sfad and the version of Nusach Ashkenaz, but the content of the Bracha and the meaning of the bracha um, is the same in both. If you cast your minds back to Mariv um, and the bracha immediately before the Shema, it begins with, in both versions, it begins, if, and when I say both versions, I mean Nusach Ashkenaz and Nusach Spad, uh, it begins Olam. with Avat Olam. But in the morning, the Ashkenaz version is Ahava Rabbah. Now, there's not, there, there's, there's, it's not a coincidence that um, the Ashkenaz version has one a different one in the morning to a different one in the evening, because there is a machloket in the uh, Gemara as to what the version should be. And the Ashkenaz version, uh, decides to do one in the morning and one in the evening so as to, as it were, fulfill both uh, possibilities, both opinions, whereas the Nusach Sfad comes down in favour of Ahavat Olam. But the, the meaning of the bracha is pretty much the same. And let's just look at the words of the bracha first before we look at anything else, uh, before we go into the uh, um, reasonings for it. So, um, one second, let me just get it up. There we go. So, uh, I've got the Ashkenaz version in front of me, but Johnny, you can follow in the in the Aspad. It makes no difference, really. And it begins like this. Ahava Rabba. Ahava, you know what Ahava is? It means love. Ahava Rabba. A great love. Ahavtanu. You have loved us. Hashem Elokeinu. So this is a bracha which is speaking about the love of HaKadosh Baruch Hu for us, the Jewish people. And you will see as we go through this bracha that it is very much a personal bracha for the Bnei Yisrael, for the, for, for the Jewish people. The previous bracha, you'll remember, Yotze Or of Orechoshech, was much more universal in as much as uh, it speaks about the creation of the world, creation of light, the creation of darkness, um, 
uh, and the angels up in heaven uh, saying their praises of God. Nothing really specific to do with the Jewish people. That is much more universal. Um, everybody in the world benefits from the fact that HaKadosh Baruch Hu Mechadesh V'tuvo V'chol Yom Tamid that we spoke about this last time, that Hashem renews the world all the time. In other words, it's the, it's the laws of nature. These are not specific to the Jewish people. But when we come to the bracha of Ahava Rabbah, or Ahava Tolam, then we are now gone from the general to the particular. We're now talking about the love that Hashem has specifically for the Jewish people. And you'll see why as we go along. So we start off by saying that Hashem has, loves us with a, a tremendous love. Chemla gedola. What's chemla? Chemla is um, mercy, some kind of mercy, some kind of compassion, that, that sort of uh, expression. It's another word for rachamin, really. Um, pity, pity, uh, the article says. Great, great pity. pity, yeah, I think that's a bit of a, I don't know, I don't like that so much. Uh, my translation here says compassion, great compassion, um, which I think is a nicer word than pity. Pity seems to, I don't know, you pity somebody who's a nebuch, really, don't you? Um, Maybe it says Chemla Rabba Gadala says pity, great pity, and then Chemla Alenu, he pitied us. Yes. So you can't say compassion does. Can't say compassion does. Can't say compassion does, no, because but you can say he, he treated us with compassion. I yes, guess. yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, my translation says you have had compassion upon us. Okay. okay. Good. So anyway, pity or compassion, that's good enough. Um Olenu, can you see that? Olenu, on us. It's all about us. Avinu, our father. Now, your father, Johnny, was your father and your sibling's father. Nobody else's father. Okay, so Avinu is our father, right? So again, it's a particular to the Jewish people. You'll argue with me and say, well, Hashem is the father of everybody. That's true. But in this particular uh, aspect, you'll see as the bracha goes on, it's clearly talking about uh, us, the Jewish people. Avinu Malkenu, our father. The non-Jews, I remember, our father who art in heaven, the non, non-Jewish assembly used to say. We all remember right. that. The Lord's Prayer, our father who art in heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Lead us not into Trent Station. <laughs> um, yes. Okay. Um, my my Dan says um, when he speaks about the Lord's Prayer, he says, "Our Father who art in Poleg." <laughs> so uh, anyway, how did we get into that? Yes, Johnny was talking about um, the Lord's Prayer. So Avina Malkenu, our Father, our King. I'll just repeat the last couple of sentences for Jonathan and Hillary who've just joined us. This bracha is talking about the relationship between God and Israel. The previous bracha, we're talking about Ahava Rabbah, the last bracha we say before Shema. The previous bracha that we talked about last time, Yotza Oravore Choshech, is talking about the whole world. It's about creation of the world. It's about the laws of nature, which everybody benefits from. This bracha now has moved on to the particular, and it is about us. It's about our relationship with God. So God loves us greatly. He has great compassion on us. He pities us. Our Father, our King. Ba'avur, now this is very interesting. Ba'avor avotenu shebatchu b'cha. Ba'avor for the sake of our fathers. Shebatchu b'cha, who trusted in you. See that word batchu there. That uh, word. B'tuach. Yes. Correct. Bituach. Bituach uh, means security. Security, oh, security. That's right. It means insurance. Yeah. Bitachon is security. Um, so here, uh, what it means is um, our fathers who tr- who had security in you, who trusted in you. Now, who's it talking about there? 
cool for uh, Abraham Yitzchak and Yaakov, I would think. Well, that's one opinion. One opinion is that it's talking about Abraham Yitzchak and Yaakov, and particularly, I suppose, Abraham, who was the one who first put his trust, the first Jew, if you like, who put his trust in God, because after him came Yitzchak, and he um, will have... Um, uh, he also put his trust in God because yeah. he did the, you know, the Akedah. But the Akedah. it was a little, little bit easier for Yitzchak and Yaakov because they had Abraham to rely on, right? But Abraham was the first one. So, yes, one opinion is that this uh, this is referring to Abraham, Yitzchak and Yaakov. Another opinion is that it's referring actually to the generation um, that received the Torah itself on Har Sinai because how did how did we tr how did that generation trust us? on the way back yeah. they said seven ishma right they said we will do and we will listen in other words they had complete faith in god in what they were going to be given the and what was it that they were given they were given the torah and you'll see in a moment that this bracha is all about uh, our relationship with the torah itself so one opinion is that the um these four these fathers that we that were trusting in god were abram yitzhak and yaakov and another opinion which i <coughs> actually prefer in the context is that it was the generation of uh, har sinai and let's have a look what what goes on here so ba'avor for the sake of in other words or well, let's have a look why I, you'll see the next few words, why I think that the generation of Har Sinai fits better. Have a look at the next few words. Vatalam Dame. And you taught them. You taught them. Who did they teach? Who did you teach? Well, what was it you were teaching? Chukei Chayim. The laws of life. What are the laws of life? The Torah. The Torah. And who did they teach? Did Hashem teach the Torah to? Moshe and the uh, people of Israel. Correct. That generation that stood in, in Har Sinai. So that's why I think that I prefer the, um, yeah. the uh, suggestion that Avotenu here is referring to that generation. So we say like this. You taught them the laws of life, i.e. the Torah. And then we ask for something. Cain, similarly, to Choneinu or to Lamdenu. Similarly, what's the root of to Cain. Cain, which means? Favour and nice, nice. Grace, grace and favour. Yes, yeah. yeah. So to Choneinu means have... Favor on us, favor us, uh, give us grace, and teach us. So we're saying, just as you taught that generation the laws of life, i.e. the Torah, please teach us similarly, teach us and grace us with these wonderful uh, uh, laws of the Torah. And then we go further. And we actually have a look and see what exactly it is that we're asking for. Avinu, our father. Ha'av harachaman, the merciful father. Yeah, rachaman, the merciful father. Hamarachem, who is merciful? Rachem aleinu, have mercy on us. So you've got three lots of the word rachem there. It's a triple whammy. We're asking for mercy here. Now, why do we need mercy? Because we're asking for the following. Vatain belibenu and place belibenu. Be in, what's lave? Heart. Libenu. Belibenu, our hearts. Our hearts. Place in our hearts. Lahavin, to understand. Or lahaskil. And to have seichel. Can you see the word seichel there? Yeah. So lahaskil means to have seichel. Seichel is, is uh, knowledge, understanding, common sense. 
Lahavin means to understand. So you will be familiar with uh, not so much you, Johnny, because you daven Nusach Sfad, but Warren um, and um, Jonathan and Hillary, and probably Charlotte, probably also daven's Nusach Ashkenaz. We say in the bracha of Atach Honein, we end it off with Baruch Atah Hashem Honein Hadaat. What do we say before that? Be, you say Bina Chochma Vadat, right? Yeah. We say. So you have Deya Bina Vachochma, we are Deya Bina Haskel. Haskel is Seichel. So we are asking here, please put into our hearts understanding and Seichel, what form? Lishmoa, to listen to. Lilmod to learn, ulelamed, and to teach, lishmor to keep, velasot and to do, ulekayim and to uphold, et kol divrei Talmud Torotecha beahava, all the words of your Torah with love. So we're asking here for Hashem to be merciful on us and to make the learning of Torah something that we love. Now, it's, lovely really, when, uh, it's lovely when Harel sings that part. Yes. It's beautiful. And uh, Revido used to sing it. He did, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, I, I'm not going to spoil it by trying to do it now. It's uh, a beautiful prayer, isn't it? Uh, uh, but, but the important thing here I want to point out is this... We're asking for Hashem to give us mercy. And I think that the merciful bit is that we should learn and keep the Torah. Ba'ahava. There's two ways you can do something you're meant to do. Because you've got to do it. Or because you want to do it. Right? So... When I first started doing my Meshuggah running, right, which I do every day, I did it because I had to do it, because I wanted to lose weight and I needed to get fit and I wasn't fit and I did enjoy it, I didn't love it. I had to do it and I battled through it and I did it. Now I do it because I like it. I actually love it. I feel good when I'm doing it. And that's a big bracha. If you have to do something, if you have your whole life, which is what the, the Torah is for us, and we're keeping the Torah because we love to do it, that's a great gift. That's a great gift. We would still do it even if we didn't love it. But it's a great gift to do it. Right? It's a great gift to do it out of love. And that's what we're asking for here. And then we go further and we say, Vaha'er Einenu. What's that? What's the root of that word, Ha'er? Delight. Light. Oh. Correct. Yeah. Or oh, light. Vaha'er yeah. Einenu. And enlighten our eyes. Vatoratecha. With your Torah. Vadabek Libenu. What's that mean? Dabek. What's Devek in modern Hebrew? Jonathan, you should know this. What's Devek? Uh, Jonathan Raymond, what's Devek? On me, I wish it's... I knew. Okay, well, you should know. It's glue. glue. Uh, That's well, right. Well done, glue. Charlotte. It's glue. Well, Jonathan, how comes you know it? Me, because I've watched you use it all the time. <laughs> Jonathan's always gluing stuff. Devek is glue. And what does glue do? It sticks. So, v'dabek libenu b'mitzvotecha. Um, cause your mitzvot to stick to our heart. Let the, uh, your mitzvot be glued to our heart so that we're, it's there the whole time. And it, something that's glued, unless, of course, Jonathan glues it, in which case it falls apart. Yeah. Uh, it, when, you, when you glue something, it stays forever. And that's what we're asking for here. 
Let Can me... I just say, Johnny, with uh, with all due respect to you, the translation arts go is the other way around. Uh, attach our hearts to the commandments. Yes, yes, yes. Not the commandments right. to our hearts. You're right. You're right. I I'm mean, sorry effective. to interrupt. No, you're quite right. You're quite right. That is the the, uh, the that is the translation of it. I think probably means the same thing in the end, doesn't it? Yeah. But either way, the mit the mitzvot gets stuck to our hearts. You're right. You're quite right, Johnny. But Dabek Libenu, stick our hearts to your mitzvot. Um, I suppose actually there is a difference. Um, you're quite right because um, if we ask Hashem to stick the mitzvot mitzvot to our heart, um, that's a passive thing from our our respect. But if Johnny, we wouldn't, stick... a, wouldn't attach be a better word. Yeah, attached. Yeah, attached. Yes, good. Yes, attached would be a uh, uh, a good translation. Yeah, if we attach our hearts to the mitzvot, then that's a more active um, act. So I think I think you're right, uh, Johnny, to point that out. Um, uh, so we'll go with attached as well. So only reading the art scroll. It's not yeah, the art scroll says attached. Okay, well that's a good word. I think yeah. So we're asking Hashem, let me just tell for, for the, the late comers, uh, Jeff and Iva, we're uh, talking about the bracha of Ahava Rabbah. Uh, and um, what I pointed out at the beginning was that we've gone from the general to the particular. We started Yotza Or of Orichoshech, which was the bracha about creation of the world. And that's uh, a bracha for everybody. We're now talking about the specific and special relationship between Hashem and the Jewish people in this bracha of Ava Rabbah. And what we're asking for is we're asking Hashem to help us keep the Torah and to make the Torah something that we absolutely love. Uh, it's hard to do things when you don't love them. Uh, and we're asking Hashem to make us love the Torah, to help us love the Torah. So, but Dabek Libeinu B'mitzvotecha, and um, attach our hearts to your mitzvot. V'yached levaveinu. Also, another word for hearts, levaveinu. V'yached. What's the root of that word, v'yached? Yichud, is it? <laughs> yes, it is. What does yichud mean? Uh, togetherness. Togetherness. Um, it does, but it's not, it's not the root of the word. Yichud. When you are together, you're thinking about a wed after a wedding, yeah? Well, well, yeah, I wasn't thinking of that. I just thought that was a translation. Or, or, the, or, the, or, the, or the halacha of yichud, which means yeah. you can't be together so, with uh, somebody. Uh, and the reason for that is the root of the word is echad. Oh, uh, yeah. One. So, veinu, make our hearts one. Um, in other words, make it that make uh, make our hearts have the one the one thing that our hearts want is la ahava to love uliyira and for fear et shemecha of your or not fear that's I don't like that word um, and awe of your name. So we want we're asking us again we're asking Hashem uh, help here to do what we need to do now. You can see with this word, yached levavenu, that we are, and ahava, that we're starting to get into a subject matter, which is going to be repeated very shortly in the Shema. What do we say? Shema Yisrael Hashem Lokeinu Hashem. Echad. Echad. Ve, what's it? After Baruch Shem Kavod Machuto, how does it begin? The hafta. The hafta, which means to love. We should. You love. should love. You we shall love. We shall love Hashem. So you can see here, this is a reciprocal arrangement. Here we're talking about ahava rabba ahavtano. You Hashem have loved us with a great love. This is the introduction to the Shema, where we are going to say we have a mitzvah. To love Hashem, they are have to eat Hashem lekecha. How do you have to love Hashem? Bechol. Levavcha. Ah, 
Levavacha, we've just said that word, haven't we? Biyached levavenu, liyahava. So these three words here, biyached levavenu liyahava, this is the very, very powerful and strong connection to the Shema, which is what we're going to say next. Now, remember, what we're going through here is what we've called the Birchot Shema. They are the Brachot that be belong to the Shema. Now, shortly, we will have a discussion about what kind of Brachot they are. But for the moment, what we need to just know is that they are Brachot that belong to the Shema. And you can see why this one is the one that introduces the Shema, because it's already started to discuss the, uh, the themes and the content of the Shema itself, only it's the other way round. Here, this bracha is talking about Hashem's love for us, and then we're going to talk in the Shema about our love for Hashem. Now, of course, the... Is, uh... Is not God telling us to live in, in the Shema? It who, is, who, but, but we are saying that we're saying it, aren't we? We are after, and you shall love it. That's what we're going to do. We're going to just do. repeating what God told us to do. Are we not? Yeah, it is. But we're yeah. trying to do it, aren't we? We're going yeah. to keep the mitzvah. That's the point of saying the Shema. Yeah. So, um, What's What's that mean? What does what's the root of the word nevosh? Oh, it's uh, uh what's the word for it? Uh, busha, is it? Yes, well done, Johnny. Busha, busha yeah. means shame. Shame, yeah. And we shall never be, my translation says, we shall never be embarrassed. Uh, but that's the same thing, isn't it? Busha. Yeah. How, how do you say embarrassed in modern Hebrew? Mitbayesh. Ani mitbayesh. I'm embarrassed. Oh. Shy. Shy is another word. So, velone vosh leolamved. We should never be ashamed. And why is that there? What's that doing there? We should be proud of what we're doing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. Have you ever, when you were in England, looked um, and you've been walking around and you've looked and you thought, oh, it's getting late. I'm going to miss Mincha if I don't daven now. So in the olden days, what would you do? You'd nip into a phone box and you pretend to be on the phone while you're saying the Shemona Esther because you're <laughs> embarrassed to stand in the middle of the street and shockle away there. Um, davening mincha. So, and these days you would probably stop, go into a doorway, get your phone out, right, and uh, have your phone on and pre be pretending to talk to somebody on the phone because you'd be embarrassed to stand there, you know, saying Shmon Esra like this. But why should we be embarrassed? The Muslims aren't embarrassed to get their flying carpet out on the uh, and uh, do their <laughs> prayers in the middle of uh, wherever they are. And good luck to them. That's how it should be. And that's what this is telling us. Don't, don't be embarrassed. Don't be put to shame. Don't feel that you have to hide the fact that you love Hashem. Because this is what it's talking about. It's talking about doing the mitzvahs. We want to fulfill every mitzvah. Don't be embarrassed about it. Don't be easier. ashamed. It's easier here than in England, though. Oh, it's much easier here, yeah. <laughs> You know, you can stop on the side of the street and shockle away to your heart's content. Yeah. Um, but you're right. But we've all done it. We've all been a bit embarrassed. You know, you've gone to a, uh, uh, you know, you might go to a to, to some do at work or a university or something, and there's a tray for food there. And you, yeah, you don't eat it, obviously, but you know, you don't make a big fuss about it. You don't say, no, I'm not eating that. It's not kosher. Yeah, I'm not hungry. I'm this. Yeah, I don't eat that. Whatever it is. Are we, um, uh, are we a bit embarrassed sometimes about our Judaism? Sometimes we are. And what we're asking for here is uh, assistance, as it were, that we should not be embarrassed to keep the mitzvah and keep the Torah. As you say, Johnny, Johnny. Yes, Johnny. 
remember, most of us are English, and that is an English trait, isn't it? To be sorry, to be, you know, have your head bowed down a bit. You know, someone bumps into you, and what do you say? I'm sorry. So it yeah. is an English trait. Yes, well, that's not a bad, it's not a bad uh, trait to have. To, it's uh, not a trait have. No. <laughs> it, it, it's not a bad trait to have. Um, but when it comes to your Judaism, that's not you. You're not you don't you shouldn't be sorry about your Judaism. If you you don't go in and say sorry, I I I need to have a mincha or sorry, I don't eat tray for food. Um, no, We should not be embarrassed. Why? Also says it. Also says it. Ella levosh means also inner shame refers to pangs of conscience for having done wrong. So you ah. feel it inside you as well. Okay. So that's a personal, different a personal embarrassment. So that's a different way of looking at it by yes. saying, let us not feel that embarrassment inside. Why? Not because you don't feel the embarrassment, because you haven't done anything to be embarrassed about. That's what that yeah. means. Yeah. Let, let us not do any of errors that we would be embarrassed about. So that certainly fits in with that. Yeah, that would certainly be another explanation for this ex uh, this uh, expression. Ki v'shem kotshecha, because in your holy name, Hagadol, your great holy name, the Hanorah, and your awesome great holy name, Vatachnu, we have had bitachon. We have um, we have trusted. That's the word I was looking for. We have trusted. We have trusted in your great name. Nagila. What's that mean? Hava Nagila. What's that? Hava Nagila. Hava Nagila. What does Hava Nagila mean? What's the word Gila? <laughs> The joy, 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 yes, joy, yes, joy. joy. Gila, Rina, Ditsa, yeah, yeah. from the Chopper, the Sheva Bracha, Sheva Brachas, that's right. Gila, Rina, Ditsa, Vechedva, they're all different words for joy. So, Nagila, let us be joyful. Venismacha, what's the root of that word? Sameach, Sameach, let us be happy. The nun at the beginning is the we bit, like anachnu, yeah? So neleich means we shall go. Nagila means we shall be joyful. Venismacha, and we shall be happy. In what? What should we be happy for? Be Yeshua Techa. In your Yeshua. What's Yeshua? Salvation. Yeah. Salvation, correct. Salvation. Where? What name do you know that comes out of that word? Yahushua. Yahushua means salvation. What yeah. other name comes out of that word? A name that we don't use so much, really. Yoshki. I think my yes, dad would say. Yoshki. <laughs> Yoshki. Correct. Yoshki. Other names are known as Yeshu. Translated into English as Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, the J, of course, is a Yud, like in Joshua, Yehoshua. Jesus is Yeshu. Um, if you look in the Gemara, the Gemara talks about Yeshu mi uh, Natseret, Yeshu Hanotsri, Jesus of Nazareth. Okay, so it's the same word. Uh, the Christians believe. Uh, that Yeshu was the one who brought them salvation. So we here in this bracha, we take, uh, we are joyful and we're happy in your salvation. And now comes something very strange. What have we been talking up, about up till now? We've been talking about the um, love that Hashem has for us and the request that we have, that we should be attached, our heart should be attached to the mitzvot. We should learn and keep and teach and, and, uh, and observe all the mitzvot. That's what we've been talking about now. And then 
Now, in Mittendrinnen, we've got something completely different. And bring us. Can you see the word lahavi? To bring. Yeah? To bring us. So bring us le shalom. Peace. peace. Where from? Me arba kanfot haaretz. From the four corners of the world. We've got some extra words before that in the Nusak Ashkenaz. Nusak Sfard. Nusak I mean, yeah. What have you got there? After Bichua Techo. It goes Varakamecha Ado Shemel Kenu, Vakasadecha Harabim, Alias Vunu, Netzak Selova Ed. Okay, so that's not in the Nusach Ashkenaz. No. But, but the translation of that is as follows. Say it again. Varakamecha, your mercy, your compassion, should I say, Ado Shemel Kenu, God, Vakasadecha Rabbim, and your abundant kindness. I'm not Alias Vunu, Netzach. Sell over Ed. Okay. Al Yazvunu, do not leave us. Yes. Netzach forevermore. So there's the extra bit there is um, the same theme, which yes. is we're asking for mercy and don't leave us. Um, um, and so. It then says that, Maher Vahave. I think you said different words. Maher means quickly. Yeah. So here we've got Vahavienu yeah. Lashalom Meaba Kamota Aret. And bring us in peace from the four corners of the earth. Where to? Israel. Yes. Betolichenu. Yeah. What's the root of that word? Betolichenu. It's not in this. Betolichenu komamiat leartsenu. Have you not got that, Johnny? Mahera have a lenu brach of a shalom, mahera, meava kamfat. Haaretz. Carry on. Next words. Oshiva al ha goyim. Keep going. Keep going. Vatolichenu There you go. Vatolichenu. Yes, I'm saying there's words before that. I think. Yeah, you, okay. I haven't got a Nusach Sfad Siddur uh, in front of me because okay. I'm not at home. Um, I don't have one here, so I can't go through all those things. So we, no, we'll stick right. with the Nusach Ashkenaz for now. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Vatolichenu. Uh, and what's the root of that word, tolichenu? Holech, is it? Yes. To walk to go. In. go. Go, go. And it's a causative form, but tolichenu, and cause us to go. Okay, in other words, help us go. Komamiyut. What's that mean? Anyone know? It comes from the word kam, kuf mem, which means yeah. to get up. Vayakom. And he got up. Yeah? Uh, yes, yes. Kam, so it means upright. So cause us to walk upright. Le'artsenu to our land so this prayer is clearly aimed at whom Chutz correct bring us to peace from the four corners of the earth and make us walk cause us to walk in an upright fashion, in other words, with our head held high, le artsenu to our land. Now, why komamiyot? Why in an upright manner? Why not just say tolichenu le artsenu or vahavienu le artsenu, bring us to our land? Why komamiyot? While we're bit, still alive and we're it says, active. That was on mute. Oh. The arts girl says upright pride Up to yes, our land. Yeah. With pride. That's right. When you, so in other words, do you remember when um, when you were uh, younger and you were subject to uh, um, when you were subject to anti-Semitic um, chants in the street? 
people will have may have said to you, get back to your own country, yid. <laughs> right? And then, of course, when we did get back to our own country, then they want us out of it again. But that's another story. <laughs> but anyway, so get back to your own country. In other words, what they want us to do is boot us out and send us back somewhere with our, as it were, our tail between our legs. So we don't want to go back to our land because we've been booted out of everywhere else. We want to go back to our land. Yes, we want to. Come and mute. Upright. So I'm Hillary's, said that Hillary's, idea, Hillary's idea is also correct, and that is upright when we're still young enough to uh, to be able to appreciate it and not all bent over and to crochen. In, in Salford <laughs> Grammar School, a real anti semite in our class told me to do the same what you've just said. And he was the biggest anti semite and unfortunately his name was Joseph Edward Wakefield. Joseph Edward Wakefield. Oh, what's the initials of that? <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you. It was the oh. biggest anti That's and he beat me up. I tell you, I tried to fight with him. <laughs> I got beaten up. <laughs> I can remember it so clearly. That's what he said to me. Get to your own country. There's a so, certain so, poetic justice in his initials there. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 Rabbi, it's just a bit of, um, I think, mirroring going on there because in the previous paragraph we talked about never being ashamed and now the uprightness is, oh, is yes. a kind of... Oh, yeah, I hadn't noticed that. You're right. Um, yes. But then the other question I had is, what do those people say who are already back in the land? Okay, now that's are. a very good question. I was rather hoping you'd ask that, Jeff. Well, <laughs> yeah, I thought, I thought you would. <laughs> That's why now, I asked it. <laughs> um, where else in our daily life do we say this expression? Tolichenu kum miot liatzenu. In the Shimon Esra. It's in the Mid Amida. Takabashofa gado. Takabashofa gado lecharitenu sanei sekabetz kulu yisenu vekapsenu yachav miaba kamfot aretz liatzenu. It doesn't say kum miot. No. no. Where do we say in know. our daily, although we don't say it every single day of our life, but we say it almost every single day of our lives, I would imagine. Yeah, that was you mean? Sort of. Yeah. If we don't say it every day, is it in Tachanons then? Is it Bech Amazon? Yes, Birka Amazon. I was going to say, oh, yeah. gonna say oh. we don't say it on a fast day. Okay, go on, Jeff. What do we say in. in, uh, in... I, don't I, don't I can't remember exactly. I'll have to look at that. Okay, so we say, Harachamanu yid barach ba shamayim uvaaretz. Harachamanu yishbor uleinu meal tsavareinu. Bahu yolichenu kobamiot leartsenu. And may you. Harachaman, may you, the merciful one, lead us to our land in an upright fashion. So, Jeff asks, what do you say if you're already here? You can't say, lead us to, your, to our land if we're already there. Now, there is a difference between the Birchot Shema that we are dealing with here and the Harachaman after the Bircha, at the end of Bircha Amazon. And the difference is that this bracha that we are saying here is uh, a bracha which is fixed, was fixed by the uh, Rabbanan as part of the Birchot Shema. It belongs to the Shema and clearly it was put together at a time when we were not in Eretz Yisrael. We do not have permission to mess around with the words in these brachot. Okay, so even though they don't fully apply to us, we don't have permission to mess about with them. So you cannot change that. However, the harachamon, uh, after benching, why did I say after benching? Because Birchat Hamazon, according to every opinion, only four finishes, finishes at the latest 
at Al Yechasreinu. There are some opinions that it finishes um, before Uvenei Yerushalayim or at, or at Uvenei Yerushalayim. There is one opinion that says it finishes after the first paragraph. But nobody says that it hasn't finished when you get to Al Yechasreinu. The Harachamans are an add on. Okay. There are and they're an add-on to Birchat Amazon. So much so. Well, I know you stopped. So much so that some people add all sorts in, don't they? Some people add in Arachaman Hu Yivarechet Mitinat Israel Reshit Smichat Kulatenu. Okay. Some people add in Arachaman Hu Yivarechit Chayel Eitzva Ganali Israel. Yeah, so soldiers. Both very nice things to add in. You can add in whatever you like there. It's not a fixed thing that is that is not changeable and addable to. So you, if you are fortunate enough to uh, uh, to be uh, in the presence of Ravito when he benches, uh, uh, and now since he uh, showed it to me, I do it as well. In benching, I do not say uh, I say May he cause us to walk upright in our <laughs> land. Right? Not to our land, because we're already here. But we still need that help from Hashem to walk upright in our land. What does it mean to write, walk upright in our land? It means to behave in a way, as Jeff has pointed out, that we are lone vosh, we're not embarrassed. So it is that, that, that opposite, if you like. So when I bench, I say, Harachaman hu yishbor oleinu mi'al tzavareinu, may the, the merciful one break the uh, yoke from upon our neck. What's that talking about? That's talking about the yoke of the goyim uh, who oppress us. That was the original thing was in Golos. It's a Golos Harachamon. It's a Golos Harachamon. It's Harachamon saying, "Let please help us break the, the, the yoke that the goyim have put on us and lead us upright to our land. Well, we still have a yoke of the goyim on us because we don't live in isolation. And uh, and so we can still say, Yishbor aleinu me'al tzavareinu. But then we have to say, Hu yolicheinu kumameat be'artseinu, in our land. Now, in benching, or after benching, technically, you can do that. You can mess about with the harachamons or whatever you like. But you can't mess around with it in this uh, bracha. So we are stuck. With le artsenu, uh, but as you say le artsenu, you can have in mind Judea and Arsenu. Samaria. Yes, yes, okay. You could say you could argue that we've not yet uh, we've not yet established our sovereignty over the entirety of Eretz Israel, and therefore we're asking for that. Yes, okay, I like that, Johnny. You could also argue. You could also argue that this is a collective prayer. I guess that it's it's we won't be happy until everybody's back. So it's you're saying, as an individual, on behalf of everybody to come back, if you like. Yeah, well, I suppose that's why it's in the in the the Havie new le shalom It's like right. other prayers that we say that are in the plural, like when we do yes, uh, right. and, yes. and things like that. You can say that, but that, but this is clearly a very gollus dicker sentence, isn't it? Bring us to from all four corners of the earth, uh, and, and in, in fact, if you think about what we say in the Tfila for the um, for the state of Israel, we say uh, that we pray for them to be brought back, may our back and forth to Aretz. In other words, we don't include ourselves because we're already here. So, the Eretz Pazurei Hem, in the land of their dispersion, we're praying for the Jews of the land of their dispersion to be brought back to Eretz Israel. So, this is clearly a very Golistic uh, statement, and you can, as you say, Le'artseinu, you can include in that the idea of Be'artseinu. And if you so wish, 
you can change the harachamam uh, to ba'artzenu, um, um, to make it more personal. And then we let's just finish off uh, this bracha, and then I want to tell you a few halachot, because it's important. Ki el po'el ata, because you are a God who does uh, uh, salvations. Uvanu vacharta. And you have chosen, who has he chosen? Banu. Us. 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 You've chosen here, and you have chosen us. Mikol am velashon. Out of every people and every language. What does that remind you of? Do we want to, do we want to say Torah or not? Yeah. What? One of the brachas of the Sefer Torah is Johnny. Yes. Asher Johnny bachar is, banu. Uh, Asher bachar banu mi kol ha'amim. It's the same a, bracha. Yeah. It's but it says, it says before that as well, like to please sweeten the words of the Torah in our mouth that we would learn it. The, the bracha just before that. It's the same. Um, yes, yes, the yes. Same, same idea. You're right. The same idea. Mm. The same idea. So, you, and you have chosen us. And you have brought us near to your name, your great name, in truth. What for? Lahodot, the praise of to thank Lacha, you. Uleyachedacha. What's that? What's the root of that word? Echad. <laughs> Echad, and to make you one. That's what you Le said before. With love. Baruch Ata Hashem. Blessed are you, Hashem. Habocher be Amo Yisrael be Ahava. Who chooses Habocher? Who chooses in the present tense? Who he chooses constantly? Every day he chooses his people Israel with love. And that's what this bracha is about. It's about the love that Hashem has for his people Israel. And how do you, generally speaking, demonstrate your love for another person? You, a kiss. you give them a gift. You give them a gift. And what gift have we been given that this bracha is talking about? The Torah. 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 The Torah. The Torah. The Torah. Yeah. The Torah. That's right. It's called Divrei Talmud Torah Techa. Dabek Libeinu Bemitzvot Techa. Attach our hearts to your mitzvot. So this bracha is, is basically the bracha which demonstrates, and we are speaking about Hashem's love for us. And the demonstration of that love being the gift that we have been given of the Torah. And we pray to Hashem that we should appreciate that gift with love. Right? We should appreciate it. It's not that it's a chore or it's hard or, you know, that expression. It's hard to be a Jew. That's such a wrong approach, in my view. No. It's great to be a Jew. It's not hard to be a Jew. It's great to be a Jew. That's what this bracha is telling us. We are so lucky. We are so fortunate that Hashem has chosen us. And he's given us that great gift of the Torah. Just think for one moment. Just close your eyes for one moment. And imagine what your life would be like without... Torah and mitzvot and Judaism. You can't imagine. No. No. My 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 son was uh, recent just now. He's on his way home now. He's, he went to Cyprus. He came here for a for a, uh, for Yom Tov for for Shavuos, and then they they went off to Cyprus for a few days with the kids to some kiddies uh, water park hotel and what have you. And he's on his way back now to England. And he says to me, I won't tell you the exact words he used because it's not particularly uh, complimentary, but he basically says, these non-Jewish people are a different breed. <laughs> and the, what, what, that's exactly the case. We are different because we have 
this great gift of Judaism, of the Torah, of our relationship with the Kodesh Baruch Hu. Imagine what your life would be like if you didn't have it, how empty your life would be like. No shul, no davening, no yontav, no shabbos. No moaning. All right, now I'm in life. You know, also, Johnny, we wouldn't have the mercy that we have now, the forgiveness, the, the understanding, the wisdom, and therefore we would be exactly the same as the people he's talking about. Correct, exactly the point. And this bracha is asking for all of those things. It asks for mercy, it asks for understanding, it asks for seichel, it asks for uh, 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 ability to learn and to teach and to do and to keep. Humility. And humility, of course. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and so this bracha is the leading to Shema because it mirrors what we're going to uh, say in Shema. Now, we, we've run out of time, but I do want to tell you some important halachot uh, about this bracha. Uh, and these halachot go, are very, very important. And they go from basically from Baruch Sha'ama onwards, but definitely 100% from Baruch Hu onwards. And that is that you cannot interrupt. You can't interrupt for almost anything. The only things you can interrupt for are a davar b'kedusha, which we've talked about in the past. What's a davar b'kedusha? Something uh, of holiness. It means the things that you can only say with a minion. So the only thing you can interrupt in these brachot are kedusha. If you're saying this bracha when the rest of the community is saying kedusha, you can interrupt, but you can't say the whole thing. You can only say Kadosh, 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 mm. and Baruch Kvod Hashem Mim Kamo. You can't say Hashem, Yimloch uh, Hashem Le'elam Elahayach Sion. That's not part of Kadusha. You can say Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. You can say Baruch Kvod Hashem Mim Kamo, and um, that is, oh, and you can say Yehesh Me Rabbah. And that's it. Not Nothing amen. else. Not Amen. No, you can't say Amen. You can't say Amen. amen. Yeah. Yeah. And you cannot say Baruch Hu Baruch Shemo. Now, when you, there's a big machloket about whether you say Amen at the end of this bracha before you say Shema. Okay? Now, the Sfardim, the Sfardim do say Amen. So they, when the Chazan says, Baruch Atah Hashem HaBocher Be'amo Yisrael Be'ahava, the Spardim say, Amen, Shema Yisrael. There's a machloket. The Ashkenazim, no, I beg your pardon, the other way around. The other way around, beg your pardon. Spardim do not say, Amen. They will hear, Baruch Atah Hashem HaBocher Be'amo Yisrael Be'ahava. They will not say, Amen, and they will go in straight into Shema. Ashkenazim, there's a machloket. The Ramah, who is the main uh, posek of the Ashkenazim, says that we should say Amen before Shema Yisrael. There is another opinion that says we shouldn't. So one of the ways that we um, do it is to say Baruch Ata Hashem Abocher Ba'amo Yisrael Be'ahava together with the Chazan. Mm. Because when you don't say Amen to your own bracha. So that avoids having to make the decision as to whether you say Amen. That's good. I, I, I go like the Ramah, and I do say Amen. Um, the Sephardim don't say Amen at all. Some Ashkenazim say the end of the bracha with the Chazan. And some do as I do and say Amen before Shema Yisrael. And there are opinions for all three uh, ideas. And it is a very strong machloket. The Sfarim and the Ashkenazim argue about this in great, great depth. Um, Reb Avadja, uh, um, yeah. interesting, Reb, Reb Avadja says that you should say it with the Chazan. Uh, which is very unusual because Rebbe Vajir very, very rarely gives any kind of credence to the Ashkenaz uh, psak. Uh, but on this occasion, he does, uh, and that's his psak. So um, 
I've got another question on this, actually, Rabbi, and that is, I've been in shuls where there's a, a kind of um, a pause, and I would say the pause is sometimes emphasised so that everybody says Shema together rather than everybody just quick going off and saying Shema at the first opportunity. What's the... So, you know? it's all part of the same thing, because um, if you are saying the uh, bracha all together, if you paskin like the Mishnah Brura, Mishnah Brura paskins that you should say the bracha of Baruch Atah Hashem HaBochei Be'amo Yisrael Be'ahava together with the Chazan. Right? Now, if you do that, then there's no need for a gap because nobody's saying Amen. But where there are some people saying Amen and some people not saying Amen, you have a gap there so that everybody says Shema at the same time. Why? Because if you are saying Shema, if everybody is saying Shema, and I'm not, for whatever reason, I'm not up to there yet, I'm still in the middle of Ava Rabba, and somebody looks around and sees Lieberman's not saying Shema. Perhaps he doesn't believe in Shema Yisrael, Hashem Lekeinu, Hashem Echad. And that's one of the reasons why it's there are certain things that you have to say out loud. Kedusha is one of them. Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. You have to say it out loud. Because if you don't, somebody sitting next to you might think you don't believe it. Shema Yisrael is one of those things. You have to say it out loud. Um, so, Baruch Hu, Baruch Shemo. What do you do if you're halfway through, Johnny? Um, when do you say Shema out loud? No, that's, a, that's why you have a little, that's why some, that there is a little uh, bit of a cap to allow no, you to cap okay. Now, Baruch Hu Baruch Shemo is important. I just want to end on this part, bit. Baruch Hu Baruch Shemo spoils the bracha. It's an interruption. Okay, now, we'll, the, perhaps do a little bit of this next week, but there's a machloket as to what kind of bracha this is. Is it a bracha of praise to Hashem? Or is it a bracha of the mitzvah? When you do a mitzvah, you say a bracha, don't you? Before you shake the lulav, you say, shake it, and then you shake it. You're not allowed to interrupt, right? When you wash your hands, you say the bracha, you don't interrupt. If you say that the bracha of Ava Rava is the bracha for the mitzvah of saying Shema, if you say baruch hu or baruch shemo, You've spoiled it because you're not allowed to interrupt. Baruch Hu, Baruch Shemo is an interruption. So after Baruch Hu, uh, and in fact, after Pesuki de Zimra, after Baruch Shema, when the Chazan says, Baruch Ata Hashem, El Melech Gadol Batish Bachot El Odot Adon Nifod Rebarena Fashot Berei Neshamot Ribon Kalamasim. At the end of Yishtabach, you should not say Baruch Hu Baruch Shemo there. When you say at the end of Baruch Shema, when you hear the Chazan say Baruch Ata Hashem Melech Muhul Al Batish Bachot, you should not say Baruch Hu Baruch Shemo. It's an interruption. And there's another one that you shouldn't say that many people do, and they're wrong. Birchat Kohenim Duchening. Okay, the the Kohen says Baruch Ata Hashem Lokeni Melech Olam. And people say Baruch Hu Baruch Shemo after the word Hashem. It's wrong. You shouldn't do it. Yevarechcha Hashem veYishmerech. You should not say Baruch Hu Baruch Shemo after the word Hashem because really? it's an interruption. It's not part of the bracha, and you shouldn't do it. And that's important. Okay, we're well out of time. Um, and uh, any questions before we go? Yes. Can you just say Amen after after Yotze Hamarot? You can say Amen after Yotze Hamorot. Yes, you can. Um, and you should. Um, but not Baruchu Barshima. Warren, you had a question. Yeah, obviously I've been taught wrongly. But when you have, for example, guests for lunch and you're all going to wash before you sit down, I was always told if you hear someone else say the brother, after you've washed, you should still say Amen to their brother. Hmm. After you've said yes. your brother, for on, on the washing, yes. But let's say you have said, mm. and then you've not yet eaten your bread and you hear somebody say a bracha, you do not say oh. amen. No, because most people wouldn't make the bracha 
I'm actually lucky until everybody's washed. But once you've d washed your hands and said the bracha, that's the 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 the, the um the Not unit finished. is complete. So you can say I'm to other people's bracha. Oh, what right. you can't do is say if you wash your hands before you've said your bracha, you can't say I'm to theirs. Right. Because you're interrupting. Hmm. Any Johnny, other questions? Johnny, not a question, just an observation. Um, in the prayer you, leading up to the Shema, you were saying it mentions about our forefathers. Yeah. Yeah. So the same also in the prayer I said, the morning prayer, it's also talking about our forefathers in the same way where it's saying sweeten the words of the Torah in our mouth. Yes. Let's have, a look. Let's have a look at the exact words. Let's just see what it says. Hang on. Okay, so let's have a look. Here it is. The hair of Na Shemele Elokeinu at Divrator Techa. Bafinu, make the words sweet uh, in our mouths. Bafi Amcha Beit Israel in the mouths of your people Israel. Vania Nachnu, we should be Vetsetza Enu and our children Vetsetza E Amcha Beit Israel and the children of the house of Israel. Lanu Yodei Shemech, all knowing your name. Velom Dei Torah Techelishma. That particular bracha mentions the next generations. Interestingly, ah, okay. not the not the last generation. No, it doesn't. It was actually in the Sephardi. It mentions twice, and when I asked somebody about that, they said it's like your forefathers and your no. Said means your your descendants. So your descendants and the we it's mentioned do, four times in Nusach Safar. What's it saying, Nusach Safar, Johnny? Venia and Akhu, the Tainu, 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 the So our descendants, the descendants of our descendants, and the descendants yeah. of the whole True. of Israel. Yes. Yeah, mm. but it doesn't interestingly mention the forefathers. Forefathers. Sorry, yeah. I thought it was. The fourth, I thought that's what it meant. Um, no, it's, it means it means the descendants and the descendants of the descendants because okay. in fact, descendants of descendants are very important to us, aren't they? Because yeah. it's all very well if you pass it on to your children, but you know, your children you, have got to pass it on. They have to pass it on, otherwise, we, the next two generations back, are going to be upset, aren't we? I think it's four generations. If they say that if four generations on the trot keep the Torah, then it's in the family forever, sort of somewhere in the family forever. The sins out, isn't it? Well, Does it? Please, no, no, no. please God by all of us. Yeah, yeah. amen. Yeah. <laughs> Johnny, just, just one thing, nothing to do with this. Don't forget tomorrow afternoon. Oh, okay. okay. I was right. going to say, don't forget, go feed the baby. <laughs> <laughs> Not my job. Are they all right? Thank God, they're all good. Thank God. Thank you for a great share, Johnny. Thank you. Okay, You're thank welcome. you. All right. Bye. 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 Stop the recording.